Hi, my name is Chuck Seligman and I'm located in Redding, California, teaching 8th grade science at Parsons Junior High School. And today or tonight or wherever you are in the world and whatever you happen to be doing, I thought I'd share with you guys and girls and adults how to draw atoms of different elements. It's one of the things you need to know how to do if you're involved in chemistry. You need to be able to tell what different atoms of different elements look like and you need to know if they're going to be able to bond with other atoms of different elements. So, this is a quick review of the subatomic particles and what their names are that make up the atoms. And I made this PowerPoint uh, presentation that should help us get a good start. On the board right now happens to be the nucleus of an atom. And we don't know what atom, what element it is yet. But I'm going to go ahead and tap that. And we put that nucleus in motion. We find that inside the nucleus of an atom, it's actually made up of protons and of neutrons. Protons are positively charged particles. Neutrons are neutrally charged particles, which means they have no electric charge whatsoever. Then we're going to go ahead and add two familiar particles. These are electrons. And I chose to use uh, wasps to symbolize them because I remember when I was in eighth grade throwing some rocks at a wasp nest and how they came out of the nest and they were swarming all around me. And it was very difficult for me to track any one of them because other ones would intersect in the same flight path that the one wasps, that some wasps were flying in. And it was a great experience until it started bite, they started biting my friends. They were my partners in crime on that one. This is not a recommendation to throw rocks at nests, trust me. Uh, anyways, those particular hornets, they went into motion. Oh, by the way, first shell of electrons, they actually can hold no more than two electrons in them at all. That's the first shell. But they are in motion as we put them there. And I, the point of that story was to illustrate the idea that electrons move rather rapidly around the nucleus and you can't actually see them. You just know the location that they occupy. And after that, for this particular atom, we happen to have four more electrons, four more wasps, and we're gonna put those electrons in motion as well. And you can have up to seven clouds of electrons orbiting the outside of the nucleus of an atom. And we're going to go ahead and let you know the outer shell of electrons happens to be called the valence electrons. Those electrons are available for bonding with other atoms of other elements. However, if the atom you're talking about making bonds with has eight electrons in the outermost uh, shell, the out or the val eight valence electrons, they won't bond with, with other um, elements because there's a rule called the octet rule which says if there are eight electrons in those outer shell, in that outer shell, then, those, then that atom is full of electrons and it's not available for bonding anymore. So that was the end of that part. Let's go ahead and continue. There we go. We're looking at the periodic table. Now the periodic table is actually organized in what are called periods and groups. And if you look on at the top up here, up at hydrogen, in the top left. And if you have a periodic table, it would be a good idea for you to take one out. There are seven actual periods on the periodic table, and they're all the same. They all have seven periods, all modern ones for that matter. And you can look at the periodic table and imagine it's much like your class schedule, where it begins with first period, second, third, fourth, sixth, sixth, and seventh. Did I skip one? Seven total periods all together. And um, basically, you notice how I'm holding my pen. I'm holding it horizontally because the periods are horizontal all the way across. The groups and families are vertical, like this. And there are 18 different groups and families. But I have to tell you something interesting about them. One thing is this. If you have the atom of the element that you're trying to define is in the first period, it's going to have one cloud of electrons. If it's in the second period, it will have two clouds of electrons. And so on, all the way up to the seventh period, or you would have seven clouds of electrons. Now here's another neat trick or pattern that you'll recognize about the periodic table. Um, in the first cloud, or in the first period of, uh, of electrons, you end up in the first group, you end up having one valence electron. So all the elements from period one all the way down to period seven in their outermost cloud only have one valence electron, which means that these elements are very reactive and they bond easily with other elements all trying to achieve that magic number of eight which makes a very stable molecule. So I'll get back to that in a second. So let's see what, what, how many valence electrons are in the other atoms of other elements. 